Hey, good afternoon, everyone. It's Steve Kaffa of JUF. Today, I got some updates for you. Um, I solved a problem and uh, didn't even realize I had solved it, and I had kind of had to take a step back and figure out how I solved it. The problem I had was I used to use this program called Yesu um, 4 or Win 4 for Yesu, um, and it's a kind of a, a radio interface for your computer and I bought this about two years ago and I really enjoyed it and liked it a lot and I use it all the time and particularly on FM where we would have uh, FM uh, uh, QSOs and stuff here in the local area it was always nice because you could kind of key through the, the different memory banks and so forth and you could you could you could change some of the readings and stuff but all of a sudden it stopped working and the problem I had with it was the power meter um, with the software turned on, if you were transmitting at 10 watts, the power meter would just flutter down here around 1 watt. And that was actually affecting the output power on the antenna because no one could hear me. And um, if you stopped the software and closed it and transmitted uh, without the software running, you could get you would have 10 watts, no problem at all. So I couldn't figure out what was going on with it. It had something to do with this program running and the USB cable but I couldn't figure it out so I went and bought a RF shielded USB cable and I bought uh, ferrets for the USB cable nothing works no matter what I did anytime I transmitted on FM this power would just drop down to about 1.1 watt maybe half a watt and, and no one could hear me so I ended up not being able to use the software so recently I went back and re redid my entire HF system and I used the DMX DXE 400 max from DX engineering I used a 50 foot of cable up to the antenna and then inside the shack I used three foot sections to interconnect the antenna the antenna switch the SWR meter and the radio all the same all the same brand coax all the same uh, DMX uh, 400 and for whatever reason, all of a sudden, I just had the inkling to go back and try this. Matter of fact, I was playing around with this on uh, 10 meter uh, with the new coax, and I thought, well, let me just go to FM real quick and see. I'm sure it's still broken. Sure enough, now when I transmit, if I have 10 watts programmed in, I get 10 watts here, and I get 10 watts on the SWR meter. So replacing all that HF coax cable fixed it. I'll give you, give you a quick demo here. I'm on a, just a local chat frequency. Is the frequency in use? KI5JUF. And you can see right there, I've got 10 watts. And that's what I've got down here is 10 watts. So that's absolutely perfect. I love it. Now I can have my evening QSOs. And I love it because now I have my, this is one of my favorite little programs for interacting with the 991A, particularly in FM and C4FM. Let's try, let's try a repeater real quick, just so you can hear what the repeater sounds like. This is KI5JUF testing. KI5JUF. All right, perfect, perfect. And like I say, you can scroll through up and down the memory channels if you want to. If you want to go over to VFO mode, you can do that too. So a great little, great little program. You got your RF gain, your squelch control here. You've got your RF power, microphone, monitor, <clears throat> processor. Some of these aren't active in FM, but it's a great little program. So I just wanted to share with you the solution. It wasn't even anything to do with the USB cable. All right, we're going to switch over to FL Digi, and I'll give you a quick rundown on where I am with that. All right, we're back. Um, I went ahead and went with uh, F FL Rig and FL Digi instead of uh, 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 Ham Radio Deluxe. There were some others out there, but I decided after doing a lot of reading and talking to some folks, it looks like this FL Rig and Digi are very well supported programs. They're free, but I think one of the key factors that I like is the fact there's a lot of technical support out there, and there's a lot of guys that have really, really got some good articles. So I decided to go with this one just for fun. So what I want to show you real quick is I'm going to clear the uh, receive screen here. Uh, I've got a uh, CW going on, CW QSO going on, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and release the squelch, and uh, we'll start seeing the, uh, uh, the uh, trail come in. Let me go ahead and clear the squelch here. So what I'm going to do is, there are two different frequencies. You can hear the tones are different. I'm going to zen on this one, which means I'm going to spot it or zero it. Zero, they call it. 
zero beating. I just zero beated that station right there. So what happens now is when you zero beat the station, essentially the Zen function on the FT991A takes the pitch coming in and it matches it with your pitch so that you and the other station are pretty close on the same pitch. Let me Zen it one more time. Zebra India November. It's a, it's a function on the 991A. I'm going to Zen one more time. Oh, they never. There we go. It's pretty close to 750. Let me back this out just a little bit so you can kind of see it. See right down here, 750 hertz. That's where the uh, that's where the, uh, the the tone is. So that's pretty cool. And check it out, we're actually reading the station. Isn't that pretty cool? One of the things you want to pay attention to is down here in the bottom, you want to make sure you're not overdriving right now. If you are overdriving down here, you can go to menu setup numbers number 54. It's called CW out level and you can change it. I'm running mine at 20 right now, which is probably pretty good. I'm not overdriving. So the, uh, the software is able to interpret, uh, decode it pr pretty well. So I just wanted to show you, I'll do, I'll do some more videos later, but I just wanted to kind of show you um, what the Zen command does. It's Zen is basically zero beating on the 9918, but it's automatic. So when you press the Zen, if your pitch is 750 and that's the tone you like, and if you want the other station at 750, you press the Zen button and it will immediately align the frequency to the other station's transmit which means you're on the same transmit at the same pitch. So that, that's pretty cool stuff. All right. Now, let me show you one other thing that kind of got me stumped. <laughs> Anytime you do a new installation, always learn something. I'm going to go back to 28200, which is where I can transmit at. Make sure I'm in CW upper. All that looks good. So one of the things I got stuck with was um, I had gotten everything Everything went really, really good. The, the the software worked good. I was able to configure it. Uh, just to show you real quick, uh, my radio is set up for uh, COM port 3, which is the enhanced serial port. Normally, the baud rates on FT991As are always typically 38400. That's the settings right there. It was simple. It just went bang, 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 and it worked. And uh, again, COM3 is my enhanced serial port, and I also have a COM4. One thing, you do need to press the initialize button when you make the changes, and then once you get the green uh, diamond, you're good to go. Now, let me show you where I got stuck. Uh, I got everything working, and I couldn't. I I I could get uh, FL Digi to transmit code. It would transmit my um, calling frequency code, but it wouldn't key the radio. And I had this problem on DM780, and then went back into my gray matter, deep in my gray matter, and I kind of remembered something. And I'm going to show you what the problem was. You go to configure, you go to miscellaneous, and then you go down here to. Did I make sure I got that right? Um, CW. I want to go to CW. CW. And what I'm looking for here is. Do, 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 do. Boy. There we go. CW. Okay. Under CW, you have one here that says DTR RTS keying. So that's modem CW. This right here. You have to have this right here has to be set to DTR. If it's not set to DTR, FL Digi will not key the 991A. Now the other thing is I have a uh, COM port 4, which is my associated with my COM port 3 from my uh, uh, silicone uh, drivers or the drivers that come from uh, uh, Yesu. COM4 is a toggle port. What COM4 is used for, it actually beats, it, it, it sends the 
tone or the keying to the FT991A. So COM3 is your enhanced serial port for all your CAT commands and everything. COM4 is strictly for the uh, CW code. And maybe for the RTTY, for all I know, I don't know for sure. So let's do this. Uh, let's test it. Uh, clear. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is let's go ahead and test it real quick. I'm on 27200. All that looks good. Should be, uh, should see power over here. See the five watts? So we're transmitting. Now I'm going to press right here to cancel. All right, the other thing I'll show you real quick, if you want to type something in here, you can do this. You can type, hi, my name is Steve. Then you can hit transmit. Okay, and then of course after that, you want to press receive and that'll clear it. All right. So that's my quick quick uh, introduction to the FL Digi. Uh, I'm just wanting to show you guys what I decided to do with and just a couple of tips real quick on things I'm learning about it. All right, thanks again for watching 73 and uh, have a great have a great weekend and uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to this FL Digi and thanks again everybody. I know a lot of you guys emailed me and messaged me and stuff. I do appreciate it. Okay, 73 guys. Okay, this is the actual cable that goes to the back of the FT991A. And um, it's not shielded, actually it's just the RT42 programming cable because I had tried the shielded cable, ferrets and everything else, and none of it works. So I just put the old cable back and kind of quit using it. So one thing I'll show you real quick, one of the things I do on my radio is I have a board in the back. And the reason I have that board is because that uh, USB connector is pretty low and I didn't want it stressing the PC board. So I thought I'd just kind of share that little tip with you. I just added a board here and I got a board right here and of course the, <laughs> the Yesu advertisement. Uh, but that keeps that uh, USB cable from stressing, uh, particularly when that radio is up at about a, you know, about a 25 degree angle or so. So here's what we did to fix the problem. When I went back and redid my HF, I went back and I replaced all of these uh, DX, uh, DXC 400 jumpers. These are three foot jumpers. Uh, I've got various ones coming from the radio. I've got um, all of my uh, HF and my FM are all DX uh, 400. And what I found was when I went back and replaced all of these cables, back to this same coax from DX Engineering, don't know if that makes a difference, all of a sudden that fixed that problem with that uh, FM power dropping on that Win4 uh, Yesu software. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a USB problem, it wasn't uh, anything else, it was just uh, something fishy going on with the mix, mix match of coaxes I had on the HF side previously. And this right here, you can see, this is the, uh, all of it's the, the DM400 Max. I, I went ahead and purchased all jumpers with the connectors on it and so forth. So that's an update. That's how I fixed that problem. Uh, and it works good now, so I'm very, very happy. Now I can go back and use that little uh, Win4 Yesu program that I like so much. So anyway, I got some stuff coming up on FL Digi. I'll show you. I decided to go with FLGG, so I'll take you there real quick, show you at least where I'm starting.